Today we're going to be going through a simple exercise that asks us to draw all of the structural formulas for a specific molecular formula. So all of these different structures that we're being asked to draw we would call isomers, meaning they have the same molecular formula but are assembled in different structural ways. When approaching this question, it's not actually uh, the answer that is as difficult as the approach to solving it. Once you know the strategies and kind of the method behind solving it, any types of problems uh, of this sort should be easy to follow. So when starting out this problem, we've got four carbons, ten hydrogens, and one oxygen. We need to assemble this in all of the different ways possible. There is no formula or mathematical way that we can predict the number. Um, it has to be done just by careful observation. And that's really, really the reason that you learn these type of problems uh, as you're learning how to draw m organic compounds by listing different isomers you get the opportunity to compare if one isomer you've drawn is actually the same or different than another isomer. So let's approach this problem. First off, it's easiest to start off with thinking of the carbons and hydrogens almost like the skeleton of the molecule and then other, other heteroatoms like oxygen or nitrogen can then be put on later. So with four carbons and ten hydrogens what are the different ways that we can assemble that skeleton? We could put it in a straight line. So this is just a straight chain of those four carbons. We could also take those four carbons and branch them like that. So now we've got three carbons in a straight chain with one carbon coming off of that central carbon. So one thing we haven't talked about in this whole process is what about the oxygen? Well the oxygen will make this problem much more difficult than if our question was merely just to figure out the two different isomers of C4H10 which I just drew on the screen. So back to our straight chain, we've got all our carbons and hydrogens in but we're missing the oxygen. So the simplest place to start with the oxygen would be merely to just put that on the actual end of our four carbon chain. So that's the first isomer of C4H10O. Even though this is drawn in a line drawing, you may want to go back through and count the number of hydrogens to make sure that you can add it up to 10. So again, let's keep with our straight chain of four carbons, but let's try moving the oxygen to a different place. So here's our straight chain. If we put the oxygen off of this side, we have what appears to be a different compound. However, if you were to take that compound and rotate it, then it's actually exactly the same compound we just drew. So this is not an isomer, in fact it's the same compound as the first. So therefore we'll get rid of that compound because it's not a different isomer. However, if we had a four carbon chain and we decided to put the oxygen off of one of those central carbons, we now have created a different isomer. So those two compounds we would classify as alcohols and isomers of C4H10O. If we tried to put any other OH groups coming off of that straight chain, we'd find they're the same as those two compounds I've just drawn. So what if we want to put an OH off of the branch structure I showed earlier? So this is also a C4H10. And let's just say I wanted to put the OH somewhere off of this molecule. Well, looking at this molecule, I've got the possibility of putting it on one of these CH3s. And in fact, if I put it on any of those different CH3s, 
on that compound, it would be exactly the same because all those CH3s are equivalent. I also, again using this branch structure, could put the OH off of the central carbon as there is a hydrogen there. So looking at those four compounds, I've drawn all of the possible alcohol containing isomers or OH containing isomers that exist. But there's actually three more isomers for that molecular formula. How do we get to those isomers? So let's go back to our straight chain again. All this time we've left the carbon structure intact and just tried to put the oxygens um, off of carbons on the ends. But what if we actually replaced one of those carbons with an oxygen somewhere in the middle of the chain? So to do that, let's take three carbons, connect them to an oxygen, and then put that right in the middle of that chain. So notice that compound is obviously different than the rest, but still has four carbons and ten hydrogens along with that one oxygen. So now, what if we merely moved that oxygen one carbon over in the chain? So now instead of having three on one side, we have two on one side and two on the other. These two compounds I've drawn are called ethers. They have an oxygen in between two carbons. So I've got six compounds. I'm missing one isomer. And again, there's no way to predict that number. I only know there's seven because I've drawn it before. So if we're going back to the straight chain, we've put the one oxygen um, having three carbons on one side, one on the other side. We put an oxygen in the chain that has two carbons on either side. There's no other ways we can put an oxygen in that chain and make it different. But what if we were to use this branch structure and put an oxygen coming off of that central carbon? So again, we have four carbons, ten hydrogens, and an oxygen. And using that branch structure, that's the only ether isomer that we can create. So once you've solved all seven structures, you can go back and look at your initial process of solving the problem. Where did you forget to put in the oxygen on that carbon skeleton? Did you think about putting in the alcohols but forget to put in um, the ether isomers where the oxygen goes between two carbons? Looking at those kind of ideas can help you solve future problems. So I hope you were able to understand more about drawing isomers from one molecular formula by going through this problem.